Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, the murder detection rate way up, even as police investigate a weekend homicide. The government's move to hold cabinet in Abaco tomorrow will cause for excitement or an incredible waste of public resources. The parties weigh in. The government expanding its swift justice program. Exactly what does this one in three chance of an economic downgrade by Standard & Poor's mean? Plus, finally, after a sweltering summer, temperatures will soon start to cool down. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney and MB12 starts right now. Welcome once again to MB12. Even though another murder was recorded in the Capitol Sunday morning, police today revealed that they've closed their investigations into nearly 75% of this year's killings, boosting the murder detection rate far ahead of where it was just a few months ago. Jasmine Bonmi has more. Head of the Central Detective Unit Superintendent Paul Roll revealing that police are making steady progress into the country's latest homicide and he also revealed that police have managed to solve more than 50 percent of the 87 murders that have occurred this year. According to Superintendent Roll, 61 of the 87 murders so far this year have been solved. That works out to about a 70% murder detection rate. Roll says this latest detection rate is a vast improvement from earlier this year. In late May, he revealed that the murder detection rate was only 46% as police had only charged suspects on 26 of the 57 murders recorded at the time. We, we're like 70% right now. While homicide investigators have so far managed to arrest suspects in 61 cases, Roll says police have yet to arrest anyone for yesterday's murder in the Montel Heights area. According to initial police investigations, 23-year-old Keith M. Brister was fatally shot outside his home on Bow Avenue around 12.30 a.m. when a car pulled up and someone inside opened fire. Roll says from all indications, it appears an argument at a party in the area just moments before instigated the violent incident, as police believe the victim was followed home. We believe he was involved in an argument a short time before the shooting, where he was attending a party um, just around the corner from where this uh, shooting took place, and he left the party um, trying to avoid further altercations, and persons apparently followed him and accosted him a short time later where they shot him. Roll adds that many of the most recent murders were motivated by domestic disputes and conflicts that ended violently. We've had quite a bit of it as well as domestic, um, you know, the love feud and then of course the feud from persons being unable to simply resolve uh, simple conflicts. You know, and a lot of the conflicts, as you find, they spring from somebody talking to another person's girlfriend or, you know, they don't want to want to talk to the, the ladies. Do not try to deal with matters on your own. That's why we have the police, we have the court, and we have been very uh, assistive and proactive and willing to help persons. But they got to come to us. We wouldn't know if, if two persons are having a, a dispute if they don't come. Meantime, Roll says a team of investigators was in the Montel Heights area today trying to gather more clues. However, he says they still need the public's help. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Central Detective Unit at 502-9991. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Well, in light of the record-breaking murder counts over the past few years, including last year's all-time high of 127, two dozen officers from throughout the country are being specifically trained in homicide investigation. The one-month course began at the Police Training College on Thompson Boulevard this morning. Assistant Commissioner of Police Hewlin Hanna spoke to the need to deepen the pool of investigators on the force. We have taken the position as the management team headed up by the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Green Slade, that we need to deepen the pool of investigators. Unfortunately, the amount of matters that have been happening over the years, particularly in recent times, have 
mandated that we look again at the pool of investigators. We've also decided that we needed to have persons like yourselves assembled because we want to sharpen the investigative tools of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. You would understand that the courts are very, very discriminating, and you would understand that, that Bahamians in general are becoming more aware of their rights. And according to Hannah, each week executives of the force meet with officials at the Attorney General's office who at times point to the shortcomings in some homicide investigations. He says the course will help the officers fine-tune their skills and make it less likely for mistakes to be made and homicide cases to be thrown out of court. The courts are not going to give us any free passes. The court is not going to look the other way, but the courts are going to demand that our jobs our file preparation, our procedures, and everything are consistent with the, with the rule of law, with what is acceptable, and certainly bearing in mind the rights of persons who will come into contact with the police, be they, be they complainants or defendants. And so that's a binding obligation. Inspector James Miller, Sergeant Allison Brooks, Sergeant Randolph Delaveau, and Corporal Annie Mae Roll are facilitating the program. Family Island officers enrolled include Abaco, Inagua, Andros, Eleuthera, and Exuma. While the government gearing up to utilize the teleconferencing system set up several months ago, officials say it will help further implement the Christie administration's swift justice program. Bonnie Toot reports. As of Wednesday, officials from the Attorney General's Office, Police Force, Public Hospitals Authority, Her Majesty's Prison, and the Ministry of Legal Affairs in Freeport, Grand Bahama, will all be able to participate in weekly swift justice meetings via video conferencing. More importantly, Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson says bail applications, remand hearings, and arraignments may also be conducted by video link. It allows the government to recognize Nice, tremendous savings to reduce the amount spent on travel, accommodation, transport, and daily expenses for witnesses and experts, whether they are local or abroad. And I, will, I must tell you that expenditure in, on this item constitutes a very significant part of my ministry's budget. The Justice System Network cost nearly $50,000. However, Maynard Gibson estimates it will save government millions of dollars over the next few years. Officials say it's a secured network that can only be accessed by people approved by the Attorney General. Swift Justice meetings have been held each week to discuss critical matters since the relaunch of the Swift Justice program on June 6. Prison Superintendent Dr. Ellison Ramming, Acting Commissioner of Police Quinn McCartney, and other law enforcement officials were able to participate in this afternoon's news conference using video link. McCartney says he expects the video conferencing link to improve the relationship between stakeholders. You said you was welcome this some new addition, certainly. Um, we, we participate in the swift justice meetings, we're active participants in those meetings, but certainly this gives us another dimension. And hopefully it'll also allow our officers in Grand Bahama to participate and get involved from the Grand Bahama side. So we certainly welcome this and look forward to greater things as, as we try to improve the criminal justice system and the Bahamas. The Attorney General says this video network will complement the integrated criminal justice system software, which the government is now in the process of acquiring. She says some aspects of that software should be up and running by early next year. We, in the Office of the Attorney General, are building, and the courts are building onto the, the police's very secure system called integrated justice to create a calendar. This calendar will enable us to integrate with the police all the way from arrest to the Privy Council to ensure that the court calendar and our calendar are all synced, the police calendar, so that people are where they are supposed to be at a particular time and that there are no conflicts in the system. The plan is to expand video conferencing to Abaco, Eleuthera and Exuma in the near future so that prosecutors and civil litigators can interview witnesses on those islands without them having to travel here to New Providence. Reporting for NB12, 
I'm Voynich Tude. Well, just two weeks before the North Abaco by-election, government has announced that the Christie administration will hold a cabinet meeting at the new government complex on that island tomorrow. There are 21 cabinet ministers, 16 ministers, and five ministers of state. They meet every Tuesday in the Churchill Building on Bay Street to discuss the country's business. This will be the first time such a meeting is being held outside of New Providence. Prime Minister Perry Christie recently told reporters that he planned to hold a cabinet meeting on Abaco to create excitement on the island and to give residents an opportunity to get to know members of his cabinet. To demonstrate that the, the Bahamas really is what it is, that even though we normally sit with the cabinet in New Providence, that in fact we can hold one here in this constituency at this time. So um, we, we propose to bring governance to the people of this community. We really want to give them an opportunity to see us, to see me as Prime Minister. After all, they've only been seeing Hubert Ingram as Prime Minister. To see the ministers who will be the government for them in the next five years. To see them, to hear them, and to see their vision and to get their feel. And most importantly, to see that Renato Curry is joining a group of new generational leaders. Well, Minister of Immigration and Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell told MB12 today he will likely be absent from that meeting as he doesn't return from Boston until tomorrow. It's unclear how much it will actually cost taxpayers for ministers to travel to Abaco and hold a meeting there. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram last week accused the government of using government resources to campaign. The Bahamas has had cabinet since 1964. Um, Grand Bahamas is the second most um, important economic center in the Bahamas. No government is ever saying fit to hold a cabinet meeting in Grand Bahama. No government is ever saying fit to hold a cabinet meeting anywhere else in the Bahamas. There's an election in North Africa. It's a very convenient time to say so. Um, but it doesn't matter where the meeting is held. It's the decisions. So please come down. Bring it on. I'd like to see you. And FNM Chairman Darren Cash today called the cabinet meeting in Abaco a complete and utter waste of time and money. He called the government's action an obscene charade and a naked abuse of power. Cash said it is nothing more than a by-election ploy designed to pretend that the Christie government cares for the people of North Abaco.